Alright, so I already did a video with this, but now I'm actually going to do a video about this. So, it's the Styrofoam Gen X1 by Dubrick. It's a portable analog synthesizer from the Styrofoam range, selling over 4 million units since 1968. And, um, yeah, that is true. It's got the stylus keyboard that you get on the S1. In case you don't know, the S1 is like that style phone, like the one that everybody sees, everyone knows about. And uh, that's been remanufactured since 2007, ever since it was discontinued in like the mid 70s. But that one is digital. It only has the key this um, keyboard. There's actually less keys on the S1, and there's a uh, lot of that stuff here. But it does have a switch down here that selects the octaves, and it still also has a tuning knob in the back. But yeah, that's it. The S1, however, is much cheaper at only $24.99, but this thing costs $70, so this is definitely more premium than the S1. But if you really want to go premium, you should go get the S2, which is like $200. <laughs> but no, but seriously, don't, don't make yourself go broke if you don't have that type of money. Yeah. Anyways, let's go over the other. It's got the sound strip, which is also exclusive to X Gen X1. It's this thing here. I'll show you later has LFO, square triangle ways, low pass filters, sub octaves, negative 1 and negative 2, envelope, delay, the X button which is just pulse width modulation, a mini jack, built in speaker, battery operated. And by the way, it's only powered by batteries. It still does not have an external DC input or anything like that. Side just says Genx 1, and the top just says that, the other side says the exact same as the other side. And the bottom says the same exact the same exact thing at the top. All right, on the back, there's some more stuff that we didn't see on the front. Introducing the Stylophone Gen X1, our new portable analog synthesizer. It's kind of aging a little bit, about two years old by now, but whatever. From quickery beats to haunting melodies, you can twist and warp every note in the palm of your hand. Packed with features, you'll be amazed at what the Gen X1 can do. Beginner or music pro, if you like the synth sound, you love this. From the makers of the iconic style phone, this is the next generation. Dubrick. And it just has a web link, you know, has standard SEC stuff, you know, whatever, barcode. Made in China because it always is. Alright, that's enough of the box. Let's take a look inside. Okay, here's the unit itself, but let's take a look at the manuals first. Alright, so this is the quick start guide. And it's pretty simple. Insert batteries and switch on. And it just gives you a quick overview of the features. But this is only the quick start guide. And unlike pretty much a lot of products out there which only give you a quick start guide and you gotta go online for the rest, there is a full on user's guide with all the features and everything going into much more detail. And it's in a billion languages. And like half of it is just for battery warning. So yeah, whatever. I'll show you the features later. Anyways, time to get this thing out of its plastic. Hold on. This hard one. Oh, first time. I don't know why I put it back in here. Ugh. Oh, this is hard to get out. It's very hard. Come on, no! You know, I'm just going to turn off the camera until I get it out. Okay, it's finally out. They're definitely not supposed to keep putting it back into this thing. Man, just, oh my god. Away with ye. Time for the start of the show. Alright, well, here it is. And 
I'll go over all the features on the unit. So first, you have the on-off switch here. On the side, you have the X button for pulse width modulation. The sub octave buttons. These are click on buttons. Click off. Here you have the sound strip. Value control. You have headphone output, auxiliary input. You could use it as a low quality speaker. Um, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I just sneeze. You have the envelope, tack, pitch, decay, the LFO, delay, and filter. On the bottom, you've got the battery compartment, and you have a tuning control. This is like if you want to adjust the octaves. There's no octave switch on this one. And the S1 also has this knob too. And the power. It also has a fine tuning knob which you have to adjust with a screwdriver. This is because, you know, eventually since this is analog, it might go out of tune and of course you gotta tune like an instrument. It is an instrument, so you gotta tune it. Speaker and no DC input, as I said earlier, only powered by batteries, which I'm gonna put in right now. takes four double A batteries or LR6 or UM3 whatever you call them uh, where's the four up oh, there it is and no this video is not sponsored by Duracell no but seriously some people they get so upset over the batteries that people use in the products when they're reviewing them like it's crazy but whatever man I, I'm not focusing on that today alright take the stylus out here attached by a white wire which has to be which has to be attached or else if this thing breaks it won't work and you just break it Get you a basic run. I'm gonna turn the volume up so that the camera microphone can pick it up better. Yep, that's loud enough. Let me turn that a little bit actually. Alright, so that's the keyboard. And here's the sound strip. Now, believe it or not, in fact, the sound strip does, is not, it's not, it's pressure controlled, which is you don't need to use the stylus. In fact, I could just, just, Use the other side of the stylus just fine and it'll work because it's not like the keyboard where as you can see even if I use a metal screwdriver you have to use a stylus because it needs to establish an electrical connection because this is a magnetic this is not magnetic it's an electronic strip but the sound strip up here is just a pressure base you just gotta press on it Literally allowing you to use anything, like legitimately anything. You could also use a stylus, nothing stopping you. Nothing stopping you from using the stylus, but yeah, I'll just tell you for sure. There's a, you might think that this wire might get in the way of being able to put it back, it'll make a mess after the first few times, but believe it or not, it fits in there really well. This, uh, this fold here, it's, it's very important and it fits really well. I had never had any problems with having to put this thing back in. The wire never got in the way or anything. Anyways, we have. Let's uh, start on the top with the envelope. So you got the attack. The, the attack is how high it goes. The pitch is how high. So it's high the pitch. And decay. Does that. <laughs> uh. And there's that laser sound. I like this laser sound. I'll give you a demonstration of this. And do that, you just turn the pitch up and you turn the decay a little bit. Let you know that in case you want to try it out if you ever have one of these. But to be honest, I haven't seen many videos on these on the internet. Everybody has the S1. Though I did see one video of the S2. That's even more rare than this thing. And we've got the LFO. 
the rate the rate depicts how fast the changes is. The depth is how much the difference is between the two. See the turn it up. The the difference between the wavelengths is different. This switch here goes between square and triangle. So now when I do it, instead of suddenly jumping from the two widths, it goes smoother. Sorry if I'm using the incorrect terms here. I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not really good with some stuff. But whatever. Anyways, that is the LFO. I'm going to turn that off now. We have the delay. You got the time, the level, and the feedback. Delay is how long it is until you see press here. Alright, that's that. And there's actually a switch, so you don't have to turn all the knobs back. You just flip the switch and turns it off. Now we got filter. This does the cutoff and the res. I don't know what that is. But this is just the cutoff for high pitches. So, in fact, unlike the other knobs, which you would typically turn it to the off position by rotating it counterclockwise, you wanted to have it where it's completely turned clockwise, or else if you turn it counterclockwise, nothing. You gotta turn it up. There it is. On the side, you got that X button. Oh, the special X button, but no. That's just pulse width modulation. That's without. That's with. I don't I don't know if the camera microphone's gonna be able to pick up that difference or you'll be able to hear it after you two compression, but whatever that that's it is. And you got the sub octaves. This is minus one. Minus two. This is both. And this is with a pulse smith modulation with the X button. Okay. Let's put this back first. There. And now we'll show you the level control. So we'll turn it up. All the way up, actually. And I'll give you a listen to what that sounds like. So yeah, much higher pitch. Uh, you definitely might break, you must definitely might damage your hearing. Don't play for too long, too loudly. And what I think that when you turn all these switches on, it kind of sounds like a church organ. I don't know if you don't. I don't know if you think that, but I think that it sounds like a church organ. I do wish they had an extra key here so I could finish the scale, but I can't because it isn't. Well, whatever. And, uh, well, I can't really think about too much to do. Like, I've, I've showed you all the features of the unit. Though I guess I can mix them together, actually. Oh! <laughs> I, sh I forgot to show you it when it's turned all the way down, of course. I'll show you that right now. So, yeah, very low pitched. So now I've turned back up to the middle position. Oh, does, does he still? Oh, these are off now. Oh, delay. There you go. And, uh, well, I don't have any music to really show you right now. Like, I, if you watch the other video that I've made, including this, you will hear some of the music that I've played. Though that's not really good because, you know, I kind of did it on the fly. But, yeah. Um, I don't want to stretch out the video. I don't want it to be filler and people aren't going to watch the entire thing. So, I, I guess later on I could show you some pieces if I learn them. So, uh, that's cool. So, um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing this product that not a lot of people review. Because I typically get the cheaper one. But, you know what? I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I'll see you next time.